Before we kick off today's episode, I thought that I would help out a friend. We're over at Zuljin's little hut, and uh, I have something for him. I'm actually going to give him a ME system. So we're going to just set this guy over here. It's wood, so, you know, of course I can't break it well enough. Do I have an axe? I have an axe. Yes, we're going to grab that. Jump down into there. Go down one more, put an RF exciter on that puppy. Z, if you're watching, this thing is cool, man. You gotta have one. Make your life so much easier. We don't have that much time on this pack, so we gotta use what time we do have to do cool stuff, right? So I'm gonna leave that there for him. I'm gonna put all my stuff away. Um, and we'll just put a nice little sign on it. Thought you could use one of these do a little smiley face and sign it as Drax so yeah he's got it powered off my power and everything and he should be able he's got a multi-page chest here Hey guys, what's going on? Drax here, back with another episode of Da Vinci. And today we're going to continue where we left off in the last episode. And we're going to kind of go over everything that I've done in my little hut here. Um, we're also going to look at my power generation. Uh, and then we might even start to get into some AOA, what I've kind of progressed with in that a, uh, advent of ascension. So, uh, to recap, we set up all our machines. So we have... I changed these chests up a little bit. I think I did two adjustable chests in the last episode, but just a compressed chest from Cracticalities. It's like a double chest going into the sag mill. Sag mill goes in the alloy smelter, and then that goes into an ender chest, which heads to our AE system. Uh, Practicalities refineries. Just all, only thing I use it for is breaking down, um, breaking down armors and whatnot. So that's what that's for. Uh, soul binders, sli slice and splice. There's a painter in the back with a pulverizer and a redstone furnace. Both are resonant, so they're really, really fast. And then we have a max IO. Uh, QED, I set this up uh, in the last episode um, just, you know, to make some different things. Uh, it's really easy. It's just some inner flux crystals near a QED. So this over here is kind of like my enchanting area. Anything to do with levels and whatnot is right here. So this I actually have going into here. This is a, a block smasher which uses fortune on a thing. So if I grab something like, let's say an ore. I don't have any ores that need fortune. Okay. Well, I've used it on all my coal, uh, which I'm up to 9,000 coal. But you just run it in and any time that you, you know, need something fortune, it uses a little bit of essence, a little bit of power, and then fortune threes it, which is really nice. Um, we got an auto disenchanter, an anvil, and then this is new. This is something I made in between last episode and this. Uh, it's an experience obelisk. And the experience obelisk uh, does basically what those tanks did, but better. Um, so I can either store one level of XP, store ten levels of XP, or store all my XP. Or I can get a level XP. You can see it's one now. Or I can get ten levels. You can see it's eleven now. Or I can get all the XP, and I'm 593 levels. So it's a little better representation, and say I want 30 levels, I just hit that three times, and I have 30 levels. So it's pretty nice for that. Um, as far as that's concerned, I set up um, some reinforced caches. Uh, well, just some caches uh, for stone. I was running a quarry, and I was filling up my ME system with stone, so I had to do something with it. Now we have 103,000 stone. Which is not bad, and I don't think I have any stone in the system. And then um, I went through and upgraded some of these storage cells. If you guys are familiar with AE, you know how to do that. I'm that was tedious work, especially when you have a full AE system. You know, you got to do a lot of inventory management and whatnot. It's just not a good time. Um, next, I want to show you guys my power generation. So um, what I'm actually using for power is something called a zero point extractor this is from practicalities or I'm, I'm sorry this is from quantum flux the same guy jotato who writes practicalities 
This is an awesome little block. I'm absolutely in love with it. Uh, what it does is it creates power from, I guess you could say from the aether. You know what I mean? It's like you're just creating power from thin air. And it's, it's really, really nice. Uh, I think I want to make another four of these. I think that's how many I want to make. Um, so as I'm going through and doing some crafting here, you'll see some of the recipes. And it's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. It's actually pretty expensive for what it is. You know what I mean? Um, so don't don't get the impression that it's super, super cheap. But I'm just making some stuff up here. Got those. I need some more diamonds. Made everything into blocks, so that kind of hurts the process here. And then if I make some quibit crystals, then I should be able to just make four of them. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now I've also got these uh, Ender Energy Conduits. Um, those are going to replace what I have down here. So my, the way these work is I got to kind of set it far away because it will give us like a withering effect. So this creates 150 RF at bedrock. Well, you can never get to bedrock. You know, you're never going to hit that level. So you, you're going to create like 149 RF per tick at the bedrock level, at the lowest level that you can possibly get. So it, it's... It just creates power, and the way that it calculates its power is it does 150 RF at bedrock, and then zero at build limit. Um, I think I, I don't know if there's a a, li uh, a little limit. You know what I mean for how little it can make, but it creates less and less power the higher and higher you get. If that makes sense. So if we go down, I've actually got a hole all the way down to bedrock. And I've actually got six of these ZPEs set up. And these ZPEs are creating more power than this conduit that I have can handle. But we're actually going to interrupt that flow right now. Because what we're going to do is I'm going to break all of these. Like so. So now we have ten ZPEs. And I'm going to just break all this cable. Because I want to replace it with some high powered cable. Because this... this um, enhanced energy conduits instead of the ender energy conduits the enhanced ones only do I want to say 5,001 yeah 5,120 RF per tick where these ender energy enhanced ones do 20,480 RF per tick so I'm going to get a lot more ZPEs down here uh, with that you know kind of setup so that's exactly 40 right there I might be a few short. We're just going to come out a couple. Place a ZPE out. See, yep, I got a wither, a weakness, and a hunger effect. Not a good not a good set of effects that you want to have. All right, so let's just plop those on. Like a soul. And then I'm going to come up like that. I've got a nice little pattern here to to set these things up. Boom. All right. I know this is probably the most riveting footage that you've seen all day. But hey, you know what? You guys wanted to see what my setups were. You wanted to see what Drax does in his episodes to set up all the cool things that he has, then this is the way to do it, right? Um, I'm actually hoping that I can save a few cables by being a little smarter about my uh, my placements here. Ouch, that one was too close. So I've got four ZPEs set up already just on those cables. Not bad. I'm going to need more cables. I can already tell that I'm definitely going to need more cables. Uh, but that's just kind of how it goes. Um, looking at this kind of array, I don't see any way that I can really, you know, cut back on any cables. But if I want to, I can just... I'm going to set some ZPEs here in on the sides. Like so. Like so. 
and then, like I said, I come over from there and there. And that's all the cables I have. So, um, at this point, let's go... I'm going to go back up. I have a quick way up, but I don't have a quick way down. We're going to grab a capacitor bank. Um, do I have all the things to make this? I, I know I have all the things to make this. Whether all the things that I have to make this are made is another story. Um, ooh, you're... Of course, of course, of course. Uh, actually, yeah, we're just going to go with you guys. I'm going to make 11. Okay. We're getting in 1,000 RF per tick because that's all this particular block can handle is 1,000 RF per tick. That's, a, that's quite a lot, actually. You know what I mean? So, but we're going to put um, 10 down. There we go. So we have a maximum input of 11 RF per tick, or 11,000 RF per tick. Put that down, and we are getting 11,000 RF per tick. We're generating 11,000 RF per tick with six of these, um, and I don't even have them connected properly. Oh, wait, we're actually, the cables must have ran out of their power. The cables store power as well. So we're really only generating roughly 6,500 RF per tick. That seems a little more likely, just with these six blocks. But these six blocks are way more expensive than, say, a big reactor or something, and they have a lot smaller footprint, which I absolutely love. I think these, um, the idea that Joe's got with Quantum Flux, the, you know, the, the network each person holds for energy, and I, I think he's got plans for items, and you know, he's got plans for other things that I think are just really cool. And we don't often see any kind of mod like this. Um, especially this well done. I mean, there's been a few bugs, but we've found them and he's fixed them, like, right away. And I just, I find that to be really, really cool. Um, and especially, like, one of the things that he adds. So, the quanta, or the RF entangler is what you would use to put RF into your network, Right. And then you have the RF exciters, which you guys seen way up there. Um, we'll, we'll check them out here in a second. The RF exciters are what you use to access that power in your network. So if I right-click on this, you see that I have 2.5 million RF available to my red flux field. And you can see that it just keeps going up. You can also see on Wayla, up there in the top, you can see the amount of RF that I have. 2.5 million almost. We're just about to roll over to 2.5 million. I'm actually using quite a bit, um, using about 200 RF per tick, depending on what machines you're looking at. Um, so that's pretty cool. But you also have a Quibit cell, and this lets you access your RF network inside of your inventory. So these didn't stack before, where now I can actually stack all these because they charged up the rest of the way in my inventory, except for that one. In that one. <laughs> All right, so that's my power source. I need to get some more of these Ender Energy conduits. Um, I don't have enough just yet. And I ran out of redstone. How did I run out of redstone? Redstone. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, you got to be careful when you're using this for. Uh, doing this recipe for energetic alloys because redstone if you put it in first uh, Jotato's got a um, a recipe for crystallized redstone so it'll grab that real quick if I put the redstone in first and mix it up so um, I'm actually gonna grab some ender pearls here and I'm gonna grab some energetic alloy I'm only gonna do 16 right off the bat I'm just going to put those in there, and that'll give us our vibrant alloy that we need for the um, the rest of the conduits that we're going to need. So I'm going to finish that. I'm going to finish up my power, and then I will bring you guys back just as soon as that's done. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, so I you know, showed you guys my power. 
basically have my little building set up how I want until I find something else that I need or want or desire um, I'm pretty much done with that just for the time being but I wanted to show you guys what we set up over here um, these were both kind of my things oh, what is in there that looks new and exciting iron mine gems oh whoa can I tame it? Uh, but anyway, I set up inside there. I got a uh, Enderman spawner, put it in a uh, you know powered spawner from Ender IO, and set up a you know a grinder into some mob essence with some Ender pearls. Holy loud mobs! Let's turn them down just a tad, and then you know just had some things continue over. And then over here we have a auto spawner room that we set up some safari balls. There's a bunch in here. Why did that get moved? Uh, there's a bunch in here. It looks like someone changed something around in my little room over her. And I'm not sure what they did. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's... Oh. No? Okay. So you have these, you know, safari balls and everything. You could put them in this and spawn these things and it's a good way for us to grind out some of the hunter mobs from AOA so one thing you kinda start with is called a flame walker so a flame walker if I hit C on my keyboard you see this whole little array show up and if I go back over to hunter you see I'm level 54 but if we spawn in these low level hunter mobs and this is all found on the wiki for advent of ascension um, so you can kind of, you know, get an idea from that. But as this spawns, we can kill them and kind of grind them out, right? So we've done that, a few of us, and got some, you know, higher level stuff. Uh, so that's how I'm up to 54. But I wanted to go into this dimension. This is a clown dimension. And I've actually died in here once. Back uh, when we had wings instead of, like, angel rings and stuff like that. Uh, I fell to my death into the void right down there um, because my wings died while I was flying back to the portal not good but I want to capture these mobs <laughs> look how creepy these things are I mean I have a pretty awesome sword so I kill them really quick oh not that one but he drops circus coins there's you can see I've already been here um, but I that's the footage that I lost because I didn't know how to record with OBS. You heard me talking about that in the last episode. But you can see I get to, you know, kill all these guys, collect their loots. Um, they drop a few different things. So what they drop, you seen the circus coins a second ago, and you now you see this sleeve gems. Those gems are very useful uh, for lottery men. And the lottery men, we'll go and find one here in a second. I heard one. There's a whole bunch of clowns. So if you don't like clowns, um, don't uh, don't watch. <laughs> so let's see. I had a portal. There's a toy merchant. Yeah, toy merchants is what they're called, not lottery men. I'm sorry. Um, hi. So I want to get one that I can kill in one hit. You're just a level 45 guy, so I'm going to grab you. This one hits a little harder. Bobo Stitches. So there's a bunch of different names for them. But let's, let's head over. Um, that's a shrine. So once we get something from the toy merchants, then we can use it on the shrines for something else. Yeah, that shrine hasn't been used yet. Um... So yeah, let me fly over to this guy. Oh, little poor clowns all standing by himself. I gotta say that this is a really creepy dimension, and the guy that created this mod is gotta be a little weird. <laughs> so now it should be showing in any moment. Toy merchant. Toy merchant. Oh, you know what? All of my waypoints are different. 
we regenerated these worlds. And so my way, because, okay, so we had a problem with mobs not spawning in this dimension. Like any of these mobs that you see me killing, we never could get those to spawn before. So what we did is we found out, thanks to Nonsanity, you can find him in the description down below, uh, he went and found out that the there's a biome conflict, a biome ID conflict with... Um, Enhanced biomes, which is the biome generation that we're using, but that's funny that this is still correct. I guess they're I don't know uh, But there was a problem with the biome ID that we were using from enhanced biomes It was overriding this one and so the guys couldn't spawn so we had to change all the IDs for advent of ascension and then It started working, but I think they deleted the world or the worlds uh, Just to get them to work again so is this what is this so now I gotta try and find a toy merchant so it looks like some of the spawns are the same because there's a compass shrine you can see I've marked some of them and I haven't been here since we updated so I guess some of them are on a per world basis and then some of them aren't like the toy merchants so I wanna just keep flying around here and when I find a toy merchant I'll bring you guys back and we will uh, see what he has to offer. All right, I'm about a thousand blocks out and I did finally find a toy merchant. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna get rid of that waypoint and I'm gonna make a new one that says toy merchant. And there's actually two of them over here. So this is kind of cool. There's one right here where I'm at and then there's another one right up there. So we're gonna see uh, for 20 circus coins, we can get a toy gyroscopter, gyrocopter. Uh, we can get some balloons. Let's get some balloons. Uh, there's a confetti cluster. Is that what that said? Yeah, let's get one of those. Uh, for 20 coins, I get a party popper, a balloon bomber, a bonzo blaster, a show staff. Cool. So I don't know who I'm supposed to trade these to. Maybe there's different kinds of merchants. Let's come up here and see what this guy has to offer. Hello. Yeah, nothing nothing with the deep stuff. Um Okay. Well, we're going to we're going to test these out. So, confetti cluster. Does this hurt anything? Oh no, it literally just like does some sparks. Yay, confetti. <laughs> All right, let's see what a balloon does. What does a balloon do? Uses. Oh, I can make one of these guys. Because the balloons don't seem to really do much of anything. All right, well, you know, that's probably going to wrap it up for today. We explored a new dimension. We've shown everything that there is to show in my base. And I had a lot of fun doing it. I hope you guys had a lot of fun doing it. And we will come back in the next episode. We're going to get into AOA a little bit. Now that everything's fixed, we're going to sit down. We're going to buckle hard and just kind of get into it as she goes. So we might even have a um, special guest join us. Some, some collab bits. Hope you guys will enjoy that. But for now, my name is Drax. And I will see you in the next episode of Da Vinci.